prior to 2012, the relations between the Philippines and China, which spanned centuries, have been remarkably cordial and warm. As a matter of fact, this catapulted into the establishment of a diplomatic relations between the two countries in 1975. But since 2012, these relationships, Mr. Speaker, has been characterized by territorial and maritime disputes in the South China Sea, starting from the naval standoff in the Scarborough Shoal. In that same year, Mr. Speaker, The Philippine Navy had almost a shooting war with the Chinese Navy when it rescued the Chinese poachers, which were earlier accosted by the Philippine Navy while patrolling that vicinity. Mr. Speaker, since then, after those maritime incidents, the bilateral ties between the two countries has took a downturn, heightened by the Philippine filing of an arbitral case against China. We know that the Permanent Court of Arbitration declared that the Nine Dust Line drawn by China over the South China Sea was not based on the historic rights that it claims, that it is not on the basis of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Mr. Speaker, conscious of all these turbulent times, a small group of party list representatives was invited to visit Hubei province, Beijing, and Shanghai. I was part of that delegation, Mr. Speaker. That visit was good and memorable. We were toured in the Three Gorges Dam, a hydroelectric facility that supplies almost one half of mainland China. We saw the mountain tea plantation in Hubei province. We were owed by the Great Wall and the technology of Huawei. And then we were met by the chairman of the International Committee of the Communist Party of China. I can still vividly remember his opening statement. In a very firm and calculated voice, he said to us, your most distant relative is no better than your closest friend. But Mr. Speaker, exactly one year after that visit, in July 2019, a Chinese vessel hit and sunk a Filipino boat anchored in Recto Bank. Had it not for the timely assistance of the Vietnamese fishermen, our own fishermen would have drowned without a trace. And then earlier this year, Mr. Speaker, on February 6, 2023, the Chinese militia beamed a military-grade laser light twice on the resupply mission to supply the provisions of our personnel in the BRP 
anchored at a young and show. It was repeated, Mr. Speaker, some two weeks ago, or on August 6 this year, when the Chinese Coast Guard hosted down again a resupply mission to the same people manning and guarding the BRP Sierra Madre. What would have happened, Mr. Speaker, if, for example, those water cannons hit a Philippine Navy ship who was also assisting those small boats trying to provide provisions. It could have been a different story. Our AFP chief of staff said that if it did happen, if it did happen, Mr. Speaker, that would have been an aggressive action that could have been interpreted as an act of war. Mr. Speaker, How much more humiliating actions will China do to malign and besmirch the reputation of a sovereign nation like the Philippines? How much more of this can we take before diplomacy becomes meaningless and irrelevant? How come China, Mr. Speaker, its action betrayed. It's about commitment to friendship and peaceful coexistence. While we know that the arbitral award did not entirely invalidate China claims in its possession over the disputed isles in the Spratlys, Mr. Speaker, I think China should respect the traditional fishing rights of our fishermen. Traditional fishing rights is a concept. It is a peremptory norm. It is a customary part of international law invoked by international arbitral and adjudication tribunals. China knows about the 1974 jurisdictional fisheries cases. These are two cases. The first case is between Iceland and the United Kingdom. The other one, again, is between Iceland and the Federal Republic of Germany. In both cases, Mr. Speaker, the court ruled that traditional fishing rights must be talked about. While Iceland has preferential rights, these rights cannot exclude the traditional fishing rights of Germany and the United Kingdom. China knows about the 1988 arbitral decision between Eritrea and Yemen, where the court ruled in that case, Mr. Speaker, that sovereignty is not inimical but entails perpetuation of traditional fishing rights in the region. And of course, the arbitral award of 2016. In the arbitral award, it said that the Scarborough Shoal is a traditional fishing ground. The permanent, Hague, the permanent court of arbitration in the Hague ruled that China and the Philippines traditional fish and traditional dispatch vessels in that area. That should have been the case, Mr. Speaker. Article 123 of the UNCLOS should have been the basis of our peaceful coexistence. Article 123 of Doom Clause, Mr. Speaker, describes the South China Sea as a semi-enclosed body of water. What is the significance of that? In a semi-enclosed body of water, Mr. Speaker, all the coastal states must cooperate, must coordinate in the utilization, exploitation, exploration, development, 
and conservation of the living and non-living resources. Mr. Speaker, when the chairman of the International Committee met with us, and he lectured us on the better nearby friend than a distant relative, I had the occasion to reply to him. I said, Mr. Chairman, that proverb that you said, that our distant relative is no better than your closest friend, my country and our people also subscribe to that proverb. But more than that, Mr. Chair, I said to him, there is another adage that is probably more relevant and applicable between our country and yours. That is strong fences make good neighbors. I told him that that night before he met with us, I saw a giant billboard standing nearby the Tiananmen Square. And that particular billboard, Mr. Speaker, was flashing and blinking many words like friendship, fellowship, cooperation, camaraderie, prosperity, respect, humanity, amity. I told him, Mr. Chair, if we can use these words as good materials in building a lasting and strong fence, between our countries in order for us to secure a lasting relationship into the future. Mr. Speaker, I hope that the Chinese Coast Guard is listening. I hope further that they should replicate the giant billboard, billboard standing in the Tiananmen Square, that they should construct the same billboard in the South China Sea to remind them that friendship is not all words, but more so in deeds. And I also hope that the ambassador of China is listening so that he could also refresh the memory, the memory of his colleague back in Beijing, that he met with us on that fateful day in June 2018. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.